I'm here with Glenn Fogel, who is the president and CEO of Booking.com. Glenn, nice to see you. Well, nice to see you, Diane. I think you are the first person um, I've interviewed, certainly today, who has real books behind him. So I almost want to congratulate you for that. Do you have a favorite mm-hmm. one? I have a lot of favorite ones. It's like saying, what's your favorite child, right? But I am reading something right now that's really great called The Song of the Cell, which has nothing to do with business, has nothing to do with travel, has all to deal with biology and cells. And it's something, yeah, yeah, E-E-L-L-S. So yeah, it's 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 fascinating. And I, I, I almost think, gee, maybe I should have been a doctor. But then I think, nah, this is too hard. It's like those, yeah, those great series like The Body Human or something like that. I love I yeah. love that sort of thing. Well, look, business is good, I'm sure. For, for I, Certainly, we've been hearing a lot about not just revenge travel, summer travels looking good. So I almost want to start with um, what is your pain point right now? You've... You know, pain point is, it's. I guess it's more the what do we worry about right now? And things are much better than they were. Three years of pandemic in the travel industry was very, very hard. So it's nice to see travel back. But of course, it's always, so what's going to happen next? So now you have almost the concern of too much travel and not enough infrastructure to handle it. Last summer was very difficult for a lot of travelers because of the shortage of whether it be airlines not doing well in terms of having their pilots ready, it is airports and not enough security to get people through the lines. There was a lot of difficulty and we really hope this summer will be better. We'll see. Can I, I I want to dispel some of the conventional wisdom. Like we often hear about, I used to live in Asia and you hear about the airport infrastructure and the travel infrastructure challenges there. Somewhat in the U.S., you know, you're a global company. If you had to look at parts of the world that if you could give helpful hints that they should really be um, improving certain types of infrastructure, what would be on your list? Well, it depends on which part of the world we want to talk about. When we talk about the U.S., it is disappointing when you come back from some of the newer airports, particularly in Asia, which are beautiful and able to get around quickly and all the efficiencies. And then you come back to the US and it's like, my God, this is horrible. And it's particularly disappointing given how much uh, we have led in so many areas of technology, but they don't seem to be implemented in the airports as much. So one of the things I would say, well, let's just, how about throw some bodies at it right now just to get things going. I came back from Europe last week and I, I do have global entry, which is great, but they just, yeah, but they just changed the technology on it and new machines came in and now it's actually slower than it was before. And it's like, who came up with that idea? So I, I would suggest the best thing that can be done is the people in charge, the people who actually make the decisions in airports, whether it be people in the federal government and security or people in the local authorities, if they would just spend some time at the airport, look at what the problems are. Yeah, put, put, put bodies to work. Yeah, like the TSA pre-check lines often longer now than the regular ones. You're like, yeah, I'll keep, I'll take my shoes off. It's worth it. But um, yeah. you, since we're talking about infrastructure, I've always been fascinated. I mean, first of all, we should clarify for people, Booking.com is more than just Booking.com. You've got sub brands, you know. So let's 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 clarify for people the the full scope of Booking.com. Sure. So the holding company is Booking Holdings. I'm president and CEO of Booking Holdings, of which Booking.com is the largest brand by far. But we also have companies that perhaps Americans are more familiar with, like Kayak or Open Table or Priceline. And if you're in Asia, you may be thinking of Agoda. Now, Booking.com is global, so that is really the flagship brand. But uh, depending on what part of the world are, you may think of a different brand first. So are there parts of the portfolio that you would be rounding out? Because um, it sounds like you've pretty much got a full, you know, complement of what one needs for travel. What would be some of the gaps? Well, we think we do have what is needed for most of the needs in terms of 
travel uh, traveling. In while we don't have a specific brand for attractions, things that you actually do when you travel, we do offer attractions under our different brands. We just don't have a separate brand for that. And we have something like rentalcars.com, but we also have within booking.com, you can get a rental car or price line, you get a rental car. So I think we do a pretty good job of covering the gamut of all the things that are needed when you travel. So any acquisition targets out there can either, you know, weep or breathe easier depending on where they, how they're looking at you as, as a potential owner. But um, one of the things that intrigues me about vendors, you're in this unique situation where they love you, but they kind of don't, they need you, right? So when there's a problem at a hotel, They'll say, oh, well, I'm sorry, you went through a third-party booking service. You suddenly become this anonymous other. How do you deal with that? Well, first of all, uh, I'd like to say that we believe we have a pretty good relationship with our suppliers. And uh, I don't think it's feel that they have to. Yeah, they, they get to decide whether they want to use us or not. And they do it because they think it's good for their business. And certainly, uh, one of the things that we provide to particularly hoteliers, is doing that customer service for them. You know, we do it in over 40 languages. We do it 24-7. We're taking a load off of them, and many of them couldn't do it on their own, obviously, 40 languages. That's a lot of uh, different services you need to be able to do. One of the things that we always stress, though, is nobody has to use us. We have to provide value, and we provide value to both sides of the marketplace. It's both the hoteliers, let's say, on one side, the travelers on the other side. If we're not giving them value, both sides have a lot of choices.